And a new report by the Henry Jackson Society has revealed that 40% of young university-educated Muslims do not believe that Hamas definitely committed murder and rape during the October the 7th attacks on Israel. The survey also found that 40% of all Muslims living in the UK sympathise with Hamas. Well, joining us to discuss this is the founder of the Henry Jackson Society who commissioned that report, Dr Alan Mendoza, and Dr Rakib Asan, an expert in British attitudes. Right, I'm going to start with you, Alan. Um, looking at the big headlines that have been produced in this report, I think there is sort of pause for some degree of concern that there seems to be some sort of attitudes uh, within minority communities in this country that aren't particularly in harmony with what we would want to suggest were overarching uh, British values. But was it a completely sort of negative report or are there some positives to gain from it as well? Well, um, that's an interesting one. I mean, unfortunately, it is the poll itself um, is not a great poll in terms of the findings that have come out of it. I think the, the important thing to note is that across the board, there appear to be some problems of extremism. Uh, which will need to be looked at and ironed out quite quite urgently, I think, given the degree to which some things are held. And it's worth bearing in mind the poll had three constituent parts, if you like. There was, if you like, a an you know a foreign policy section on 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 Israel, which frankly you you would probably expect um, a, a degree of divergence uh, uh, from the general population, which which was a control poll. You then had an anti-Semitism one where um, you might have expected it but not you know thought it was right that there was a divergence there because it's you know wrong to obviously be racist um, and finally there was a sort of what's going on in the UK policy where I think the results were also quite worrying in terms of how this worked so I think across the board there are potential problems I think the interesting part about where there is a positivity is if you look at the general poll uh, all you know, general people who are responding think there is a big problem with extremism in this country. So I think that's that is important to note that people are aware that there's a problem there. And also, very interestingly, very interestingly, when asked to determine which of the three forms of extremism, whether it is radical Islam or it is far right or far left, um, is the most pressing. Most people go for radical Islam, which is which I think is an interesting one because we've been fed quite a lot over the last few years telling us that this is not the biggest problem, that far, the far right is the biggest rising problem in this country, but people do not seem to buy that. And the last point is, the most interesting about that was that even among uh, BAME uh, respondents, uh, so the people who could legitimately be expected to fear the far right more, say, than others, they too picked radical Islam as the biggest threat as far as they're concerned on the extremism three. So there are some interesting results among those. Uh, let's bring Dr. Rakib Asen in on this. Uh, Rakib, thanks for joining us. Uh, I mean, one thing to note is 46% uh, of Muslims living in the UK sympathise with Hamas, which means, I think, encouragingly, 54% don't. Let's remember that. But uh, when we learn uh, from this poll that 40% of university-educated Muslims in this country between the ages of 18 to 24 don't believe Hamas committed those crimes six months ago, rape, etc., murder, uh, killing people at point-blank range, chasing those kids away from the pop concert, all that. Uh, I mean, do we believe that they don't believe that this happened? It was before our very eyes. We saw it on telly. We've seen the photographs. We've heard all the reports. Those uh, hostages are still held in the tunnels beneath Gaza. So when these university-educated Muslims say they don't believe Hamas committed these crimes, I don't think they're telling the truth. They're just voicing an increasing antipathy towards British society. Well, Kevin, I couldn't possibly speculate, but one point I will make is that you'll find a great deal of big brain conspiratorial thinking on university campuses. Uh, quite often people think that higher educated people are more likely to have the critical thinking skills to reject conspiracy theories. I think you'll find that there's an effect where they believe that they'll be able to see things by virtue of their higher education that other people couldn't possibly understand. Or detect. Point, so I don't, th I don't think that finding is necessarily one where uh, university students are de denying um, reality as such. It's that it's more that they may even be more vulnerable to believing in conspiracy theories because they have a higher estimation of their own knowledge. Point taken. Uh, Alan, I want to 
I come back to you, and I thought that some of the results on things such as whether Sharia law should exist in this country are quite uh, interesting. I don't have the figure in front of me, so you can remind me of what it was, but I remember it being a relatively high percentage in terms of being in the double figures. Does this suggest that what's happening as a result of increased inward migration is a sort of atomization of society, where maybe those first sort of windrush uh, migrants who came over and settled here didn't hold on to those uh, sort of cultural values and did integrate, but somehow we're now building up layers where we're importing uh, belief systems, not belief systems so much, but cultural mores that are in direct friction with our own. Well, I think what, what's quite clear when you look at results like that, and on that particular one, there was a one in three uh, who expressed either you know moderate or strong support for Sharia law. I think what you're seeing is a failure of integration policy. Um, I, I'm not sure it's necessarily you know tied per se to uh, waves of immigration, because actually what's interesting is that uh, UK-born uh, Muslims throughout the study appear to be slightly more radical than foreign-born uh, Muslims, which tells you that there's a bigger problem going on within the UK right now about how we're integrating and how we're bringing people to share values with each other. And this is not new. We've been, you know, lots of us have been looking at this for well, decades now going and saying that the government has not, or governments, I should say, have not placed enough of a premium on this issue. They haven't built up civic values. They haven't built up participation. And unfortunately, you're going to reap the, uh, the sort of whirlwind from that uh, down the line if it keeps on going like this. And polls like this will become more common rather than less common if we do not get integration policy into sharp order. Uh, Rakib, uh, have a look at this. Uh, let's remind ourselves. This is what worries me, uh, mm. is uh, the sort of level of ignorance uh, that uh, is proliferating around Britain, generally speaking. Now, this was fairly soon after the October the 7th attack, maybe a month or so. Uh, these are two people taking part in a big pro-Palestinian march, snaking through London. Uh, let's have a look at these two in action. Hamas invaded Israel on the 7th of October. What was your initial reaction to that? Uh, I didn't believe they did, did they, Hamas? Uh, I think so. I, honestly, like, I think I need to be a bit more clued up on like, everything that's going on. So I feel like I'm not really qualified to answer that too well. I mean, I'm not sure if I've seen anything that shows that that's actually happened or actually correct. So, Rakib, what are these marches all about? If they've got people like that in who have no idea what Hamas is, have no idea what they're actually marching for, don't know about the Middle Eastern conflict, and yet there they are with their placards, free Palestine, etc., etc. What is going on at these pro-Palestinian marches? Obviously, there's a big pro-Palestine element, but I think predominantly, having attended two or three of these marches, predominantly what's going on is a great outpouring of anti-British sentiment, uh, largely on the part of a lot of Br British people, many of them Muslims. What's going on? Well, firstly, I'd make the point that those two individuals, they're probably highly formally educated. So just, just with tapping back to the previous point that I made um, earlier in the interview, I, I think those kind of contributions undermine the credibility of the wider pro-Palestine movement. I think that there's a, there's a genuine case to be made um, in terms of Palestinian statehood, which is rooted in the right to self-determination and national sovereignty. But I haven't actually heard those kind of principles be being put on the table when presenting the case um, for Palestine uh, more generally in terms of Palestinian statehood. So I do think at the protests, I think, I think it's possible that you can be pro-British and pro-Palestine. Let me be very clear. I want to make that point. I agree point. with that. I absolutely make that point, but I, what I'd say about the demonstrations, in my view, I've been uncomfortable with the level of anti-Semitic chanting, the displaying of pro-terror paraphernalia, and the government responded to that by creating this new definition of extremism, which is highly problematic. I think they'd actually have the potential to vilify social conservatives with perfectly legitimate views. I think what we need, we need to see stronger enforcement and application of existing laws which are decided to combat ideologically motivated violence, intimidation and harassment. Uh, thank you well both said, to uh, Dr. Alan Meadows and Dr. Rakib Asan.